Hello, and welcome to Take 10 on Tuesdays with the Tennessee Tribune. I'm Sandra Long Weaver, Editorial Director of the Tennessee Tribune, and I am here with State Representative Brenda Gilmore. Hello and welcome. Hi there, how you doing? <laughs> and this is our fourth annual sort of state of the state. Yes. Especially on how it impacts African Americans in Nashville. So this is our annual discussion. So I'm excited about this. I can't believe we've been doing it for four years. I already. know. I'm excited and honored that <laughs> not, I was here with you on the very first year yes. that you began this, and this is the fourth time going around. So, yes. so thank you for including me. Oh, definitely. <laughs> well, let's sort of jump right to it, because I think 2015 was a very busy year for mm. the state legislature. Absolutely. And uh, I know there were a number of issues that came to the forefront. Mm -hmm. Um, so let's start maybe with one of the tough ones. Okay. Talk about abortion. Abortion. What happened um, with that whole issue? Okay. In, in terms okay. Of Tennessee. I would just say that we're in our 109th General Assembly, and in year 2016 we will conclude the 109th General Assembly. And there were a lot of tough issues that were passed, or some good uh, bad things that we prevented from getting passed and good. I'm pleased to share this today with your audience. On abortion, um, some people felt like, some of our ultra conservative colleagues felt like it was a good thing that we passed uh, some laws dealing with abortion and then some of us felt like it was a hindrance to women and getting good care. One of the uh, laws that were passed said that before women could have an abortion, they had to have two doctor's appointments to, um, before that they can do that, and they had to have an ultrasound. Mm -hmm. And while that may sound harmless on um, the surface, when you look at women who are in disadvantaged communities, yes. who may have to rely on public transportation, mm -hmm. who may not have a doctor in their communities, that means that they have to find a way to a physician, they have to pay the cost mm -hmm. to be examined, and then they have to uh, take time off work. So right. that's a lot of inconveniences mm -hmm. uh, for these women. So uh, I was not in favor of that. There was also uh, a law that was passed that put very stringent laws on uh, clinics. If they perform 50 abortions or more, they have to go through certain regulations. Oh, so the regulations change. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Is there any possibility that it will be revisited in 2016? or? It is what it is for now. I think it is what it is for now. In, in this particular uh, climate with, uh, I would say, our ultra-conservative environment, I expect more attention to be placed on abortion and for it to be tightening up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. And health care. So. Health care was probably the biggest issue that we uh, face and probably one of the greatest disappointments. Oh, really? Uh -huh, because mm -hmm. we failed to get that passed in this General Assembly. The Insure Tennessee. Exactly. And it looked like it was going to go through at one point. Well, in fact, it didn't make it out of any committees, okay. in the Senate committees. Mm -hmm. And so we would have loved to have at least gotten to the floor and given an opportunity to vote on it. Uh, Governor Haslam made a proposal mm -hmm. to ensure um, uh, additional 470,000 people mm -hmm. in the state of Tennessee. Which uh, would have been wonderful. Absolutely. And to bring in millions of dollars mm -hmm. uh, to in the federal aid. In federal money mm -hmm. uh -huh, for, for Tennesseans to be insured. And each time it was bought up twice in. Uh, Senate committees, it failed. And, wow. mm, so we never considered it in the House, and of course it never got to the House floor. But what is most glaring is that we have almost a half a million people that could have been insured mm -hmm. because uh, the governor had worked out a very creative proposal with the federal government where it would not look like affordable health care, but it would have uh, Tennessee's own stamp on it for Insure Tennessee, right. and that too was blocked. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, was there anything good that came out of uh, the general session relating to health care? Anything else? Mm -hmm. uh, no, I think it just highlighted the need that those of us who feel like that we still need to work on behalf of those individuals, those Tennesseans who are either underinsured insured or don't have any insurance at all that we need to continue working on their behalf. Okay. So I don't think no. I would say no. Okay. <laughs> I would right. say no. In fact, we've had, as a result of us not participating 
in the affordable health care program proposed mm -hmm. by our president, then a number of hospitals in the state of Tennessee have closed. Oh, I didn't yeah. realize that. Yeah, okay. so I would say it's 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 getting uh, a dire emergency that we uh, address this issue and we do it pretty soon. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, in small counties where sometimes the hospitals are the engine that drives employment, mm -hmm. in addition to providing good health care, then we will continue to see closures. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So any possibility this may come up? Well, in, in fact, session? there's a rally today. Oh. Uh -huh. So we will continue to talk about it and keep it on the forefront and okay. uh, just work hard that it be bought back okay. up. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Today being December 15th. Yes. This, this yes. will air a little bit later. Yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. All right. Other issues. So education, which is a broad topic. And yeah. Talk about teachers, students, yes, yes, yes. search for a new superintendent. Mm -hmm. I think we have a lot of good things happening in the state of Tennessee and in Davidson County in the way of uh, education. I will commend our governor uh, on Promise Tennessee, which okay. allows yes. all of our students to get a free Free right. is always good. Yes. <laughs> Free two-year education at any of our community college or technical colleges. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's a good thing. We've seen a significant jump in uh, students attending school. Wonderful. And so we got to continue that uh, that trend, and particularly African Americans, because I think in the past some of our African American children, because there's still such a huge percentage of them being first generated college students, yes. they really don't uh, have um, an appreciation mm -hmm. of junior colleges, of community colleges. So we've got to get the word out to them that this is a good way to provide a pathway to a four-year college by completing these two years mm -hmm. of free education. Cause right. and education is so expensive. It, very expensive. And you do have a degree. Yes. When you come out of the uh, community college, it's a associate, you know, a associate mm -hmm. degree for two years. Mm -hmm. And that gives you also gives you a step up. Absolutely. You know, if, if the pathway to four-year college is not quite there for you. Yeah, so exactly. To take advantage of that is a one. And other states are starting to look at Tennessee's model. Uh, it's, a, it's a model that is even our president came down and visited us and commended Tennessee for this very forward and progressive move. And two of our colleges in Tennessee, Tennessee State University, which is my alma mater, yes. uh, and uh, Austin P University, students can actually go on those campuses and take their two years of school. Oh, I, oh mm -hmm. that's wonderful. So that's a good thing. That's a great thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. That's a great thing. All right. Anything mm -hmm. else going on with uh, students or teachers? Or well, what? teachers, of course, got a very much needed uh, pay increase this year. Mm -hmm. uh, the governor and um, my colleagues on the other side had denied uh, teachers uh, this pay increase for a number of years. Mm -hmm. So they finally were able to realize it last year in 2015. And in addition to that, this legislature approved a program where teachers would be insured for the 11th year. In the past, they were only insured for 10 months out of each year, wow. but now they insured for 11th month oh, that's out great. of each year. Yeah, good. so that's yeah. a good thing. Yeah, it's a wonderful thing. Guns is always a hot topic. Oh, yes. Let's talk about guns. Guns, guns in parks, guns <laughs> in uh, bars, <laughs> guns, guns, guns. We have, guns in churches? <laughs> it's just about been approved everywhere to take guns. So guns yeah. in parks was approved this year. Yes. Uh, in Davidson County, we have continued to say no, that's not appropriate. Mm -hmm. And it's being tested uh, by Attorney General. Um, but um, our, our Metro Council did vote that they would not be allowed in Davidson County. And so we'll have to see if the state trumps our local legislation or if the state's law, because we did vote that they would be allowed in parks. We were very disappointed that the governor did not veto this bill, yes. but he did not. Um, we also voted that um, people could have uh, their permit for a lifetime. Oh, Okay. Yes, and that uh, <laughs> people who have had mental issues, once they've been certified by a physician that they are stable, have been stabilized, they can obtain permits, and we didn't think that that was a very wise decision. Uh, but uh, we did have some victories. We were able to hold back legislation that says that you didn't have to have a background check. So mm -hmm. we do still think that that's very important, Great. that you have a background check. Good. So we said no to that. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. 
Any other major issues that were tackled in uh, 2015? Uh, there were some efforts to have an, a voucher program. This has been um, uh, voted down for the last few years. Mm -hmm. I think that there were, if there's any success at all in uh, those people who are advocating for vouchers, we did pass a bill where parents are granted a $6,000 voucher for students who are disabled. And the student and the parents can craft that um, help and resource in, in whichever way they think is most beneficial to their child oh, for six thousand mm -hmm. dollars. There are some who feel like that that probably was not a good decision because as parents we may not always have the wherewithal to go out and get the appropriate resources or to use those funds in appropriate manner. Okay. Uh -huh. But that is the first step that some feel yeah. like. For and that remains to be seen because yes. I'm sure it'll be monitored to make sure that it is you being used correctly. Yes, we certainly hope Appropriately. so. Yeah, yes. we certainly we certainly hope so. Okay. Um, there was an effort to make the Bible the official book of Tennessee. I saw that. Yes. Uh-huh. That was uh, voted down. Mm -hmm. And um, while I myself am a Christian, I probably think that that probably was a good decision. Yes. Because we have so many different religions in the state of Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And so those other religions probably felt like that they too should have their official book. Um, made as the official book is Tennessee as well. Right, so, and mm -hmm. our country was founded on one of the principles is freedom of religion. Exactly. Being able to worship as you please. Yes, yes, yes. So. And even today as we are looking at some of the um, issues regarding refugees, yes. um, there was a bill that almost got passed on the last day of the session. It was voted down, and it would have allowed uh, children who are uh, uh, relatives, children who are uh, whose parents he came here as refugees, mm -hmm. to have gone to college, getting the same benefits as if they were American citizens, and um, which means that they would not have to pay any additional fees. Right. Uh huh. And that got. That bill got voted down the last day of session. I expect to see that again. Oh, yeah, really? In yeah. 2016? Yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, we want to make sure that all our young people, that our community is educated. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing wrong with that, absolutely at all. Right. Mm -hmm. And people from different backgrounds do bring something to the table that makes our community stronger. Absolutely. Both educationally, culturally, and economically. E exactly. So. E exactly. Okay. And you know, we've been talking about wine and grocery stores for a long time. Oh, yes. Yeah, what is the yeah, status yeah. of that? So, uh, very soon, you're going to be able to go to Kroger's and buy your cheese and your eggs and your wine. Okay. Uh -huh. So, we're looking <laughs> forward to that. So, uh -huh. date night at Kroger's. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, a lot of people think that that's a good thing for our community because mm -hmm. many uh, females don't feel comfortable going in liquor stores right and if they just like to have a glass of wine they would be able to buy that right in, with any any kind of stigma going into a mm -hmm. liquor store oh mm -hmm. good mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. all right mm -hmm. well it has been a busy 2015 it has is it there has. anything else that's on that happened or can we move on to what you think may come up in 2016 well i think education will continue to be a very hot topic mm -hmm. and issue in 2016 there's uh, Tell me about charter schools in Tennessee. What's going on with charter schools? I know that's been mm -hmm. an issue in the past. Mm -hmm. and still lots of discussion on that? Yes, I think that would be a very hot issue. In 2016, there's a lot of uh, competition for those dollars between charter schools and public schools. Mm -hmm. And a lot of Tennesseans are asking the question, is it appropriate to use public funds for charter schools. And uh, because uh, some of us, I think, are so anxious to see all of our students' success uh, succeed, I probably am a little bit more open about charter schools than I have been in the past. Oh, really? I think that it may be appropriate in some cases to have good charter schools. Mm -hmm. However, it's still very early in the game, so we need to see how charter schools are, are, are performing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that that's going to be a top hot issue. One of the uh, issues that is just boiling over even as we talk has to do with the new proposal that Governor Haslam is proposing. Right now, there's two major educational systems in the state of Tennessee. 
University of Tennessee systems yes. and our Board of Regents. Yes. So the governor has proposed that our six colleges and universities come from under the umbrella of the uh, Board, Board of Regents. Regents. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that the Board of Regents only be responsible for community college and our technical schools. Wow. And that each of those six public uh, colleges and universities would have their individual boards. And I think the... Um, that's an interesting proposal. It is, and it I, we think it all started because the University of Tennis of uh, Memphis oh. wants their individual board, and I they've see. asked for it for a number of years, mm -hmm. even going back to uh, Governor Bredesen under the Democratic administration. Oh, really? Yes, uh huh. And I think they see themselves competing with University of Tennessee, Tennessee. probably because of their law school mm -hmm. and their medical school down there. Um, there are some of the colleges who feel like that that's a good thing, mm -hmm. and there are some that feel like that that is not a good thing. And I can certainly see where you would be strengthened under the umbrella of the Board of Regents. Yes. Mm -hmm. In terms of economies of scales when you're purchasing, mm -hmm. just having more influence than mm -hmm. uh, sometimes having your individual board. So, as chair of the uh, Tennessee Black Caucus, which I have the honor of serving as. Yes, I was uh -huh, going to ask you uh -huh. about that as, as well. We're going to be uh, talking about that, and mm -hmm. maybe a proposal that we're going to put forth with the governor is to allow each of those colleges and universities to either opt in. Oh, if give, they them the, give them the choice. Yes. Uh -huh. okay. If they feel like it's to their advantage mm -hmm. to have an individual uh, board of directors, then that would be their decision and that would be the model they would follow. Mm -hmm. But for those colleges who may not be as large as um, Middle Tennessee State University, which has close to 25,000 students, right. mm -hmm. then they it may be to their advantage to stay under the umbrella the of the Board of Regents. Board of Regents. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. So will, are you, will there be hearings on this topic? Well, or right now the office? governor has formed a task force made up of the presidents of the colleges and university. Mm -hmm. But you know, the governor is the governor. So most that's people, yeah. uh, you know, even if they feel like that that's not the right um, decision, I'm not sure how open they will be the govern to the governor and letting them know that that's not the, uh, the uh, way to go. Yes, exactly. Okay. He has to get it by the uh, legislature. It's going to be proposed when we go back in 2016, but uh, I'm ex expecting uh, we make it make some small tweaks, but the, in the end, it probably will be approved. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, citizens can contact you or other members mm -hmm. of the legislature to say how they feel on this exactly. issue. Exactly. Because it, it can affect quite a few families. Exactly, um, exactly, exactly. I think um, universities like Tennessee State University still have a very unique mission. Yes. Uh, probably 90 96 percent of the students at Tennessee State University are still first generation college mm -hmm. goers mm -hmm. and uh, a huge percentage in the high 90 on uh, Pell Grants or some form of financial aid right. and their student body looks a lot different than Middle Tennessee State University or East Tennessee State University. Mm -hmm. And there may some, be some merit in them continuing to be in the uh, Board of Regents. Mm -hmm. and, and also their the number of students exactly and compared to middle Tennessee they're about a third exactly of the size so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that makes a difference mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think this whole discussion again about refugees will will occupy a lot of our time mm -hmm. uh, the state of Tennessee signed uh, a, a resolution as well as some of our legislators have taken a very firm stand saying that we should have a moratorium on people from Syria coming here and um, so we will continue to have discussions about that whether that's appropriate or not. Um, some of us feel like that America was built on people coming from all different places in this world. They were. Uh -huh. it was. <laughs> and that that may not be the it's right. A country of immigrants. So. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the hot, hot items I think that will go on in uh, 2016. Okay, and what about transportation? Yeah. Uh, I know uh, that'll come up again, I think. Yeah, I think that the uh, 
most of us when we're going to work in the morning mm -hmm. or when we're coming home in the afternoon we recognize that uh, Davidson County especially yes. has to make some hard decisions about transportation mm -hmm. and that we're going to need some kind of uh, rail system or some kind of modern way to get us back and forth when we work and when we play mm -hmm. uh, because um, we cannot continue to stay in traffic jams two or three hours a day right. which takes a productive uh, part of our day out. Okay. Mm -hmm. It'll mm -hmm. be interesting to see how that comes up. And I also wanted to ask you, um, Metro Nashville has a new mayor. Yes. Who I think has been in office almost 100 days. Mm -hmm. And how do you think she's doing? I think this, this is an exciting time for Davidson County. Mm -hmm. We have our first female mayor, whom I'm very proud. She's done very good for the first uh, several months that she's been in. I've been very pleased with her appointments. A lot of young African American mm -hmm. uh, uh, young people, and I'm very, I'm just thrilled about them because all of them are very bright and mm -hmm. smart, and has a lot of expertise in their area. So I say, right on to her. I think she's doing a good job, and if we continue to support her, and in those areas where we feel like she's maybe venturing a little bit off uh, the journey, then. Um, talk to her and be honest, I think that we will end up with a great four years and we can see progress. One of the areas that she's focusing in has to do with uh, youth violence. Yes. Yes, mm -hmm. and just last night there was a, a youth violence summit, over mm -hmm. 300 people attended, mm -hmm. and so I think it was a good first step where at least we got everyone in the room having that discussion about the need to focus in on our young people yes. and what we can do to create a little bit more harmony with them. The Metro Council is exciting. Mm -hmm. We have more African Americans than we've had in uh, the history of the council. Uh, I think that there are probably 13 or 14 African American, oh, about 15 women. Really? So yes. Wow. So it's definitely so it's really changed. <laughs> it's definitely the year yes. of the woman mm -hmm. and a lot of young people. Mm -hmm. So they bring, create creative ideas with them and a new energy. So I think Davidson County is just going to be just a whole new era okay. of, of these millenniums. Great. Yeah, I'm excited about that. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. All mm -hmm. right, and you will continue to chair the, um, I want to say Congressional Black Caucus, the Legislative Black Caucus. Yes, 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 yes. Uh -huh. yeah. I have one more year. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, some of the big um, items that we will focus on this summer, we had a hearing on mass incarceration yes. and its impact on our community. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I think it was partly to address um, the number of people who are coming out of the prison system with felonies mm -hmm. and to create some, um, I guess, equities in the systems where we see more poor people or more African Americans making up our prison system. And the gov governor has also uh, created a task force on um, criminal justice system and some of the recommendations that are coming out of that task force we feel like is not beneficial to the kinds of communities that we represent oh, so I'm hoping that mm -hmm. we can have some legislation that will uh, level the playing field on that so that's a good thing good. Mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. we look forward to it thank you thank All you right. Thank you, State Representative Gilmore, Thank for you. joining us for the fourth annual discussion on what's going on in our great city of Nashville and Davidson County. Thank you. And uh, we look forward to hearing more from you during this, this session that's coming up. Thank you. And thank you for joining us.